I want to be able to conclude my remarks with something that has been, Mr. Speaker, very important. Uh, and I hope uh, that its explanation is one uh, that is taken not historically in the way that it should. And I want, I want to ignore, uh, not to ignore uh, the attack on democracy and to acknowledge the leadership of this House uh, for the January 6th committee. I have worked on a select committee. Uh, I am uh, a member who was here for 9-11, and when I say here, I was literally in this Capitol and among others fled out of this Capitol uh, and watched the billowing smoke uh, that was the results of the hit at the Pentagon as we were escaping. And so I take uh, very seriously uh, the issues of January 6th. I want to also briefly acknowledge uh, the work that we've done with ensuring that Confederate statues were removed uh, and to put them in the place of history, but not a place that is a citadel of democracy when there were those uh, that stood up against that democracy. I want to acknowledge the validity of the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and pay tribute to this family that has been so sacrificing to try to make things right. But now I want to uh, proceed with what I think we next must be our next step with voting is the H.R. 40, the Commission to Study Slavery and Develop Reparation Proposals. And I want to take away any glare or misunderstanding uh, that this is a figment of our imagination. Uh, this is uh, something that should, we should do in passing. Uh, it is an impossibility. Uh, it is a third rail. If we do this, something will happen. I welcome and I am here present to speak to all of my colleagues, Democrats and Republicans. But I want you to look at the back of this slave. The silence is deadening as to what occurred for almost a quarter of a thousand years, in bondage over 200 years. We have difficulty in detailing the actual facts of the precise brutality in every plantation, in every nuance, in every northern state, in every southern state, in every western state, in every eastern, because it was prevalent everywhere. There were different times when it ended, certainly December uh, 1965 was when the 13th Amendment was so eloquently debated, difficult with difficulty, and it was passed. But H.R. 40 is the distinct opportunity internationally for America's presence to be known that we are back, that we are willing to acknowledge the original sin. We're not here accounting for my neighbor who will tell me that he or she did not have slaves. That is not the accounting that we are, in essence, looking at. We're not looking uh, to be able to see whether or not my other neighbor just left slavery. Slavery is part of America's history. The DNA and the progeny of slavery are here in America. You cannot ignore them. They are the foundation of this nation. They built the place I now stand, slaves. They built the White House, slaves. Uh, they uh, built infrastructure. They created cotton and made it king, never to be given any compensation for years of work. No health insurance, no insurance, no workman's comp, no salary. But as the UN Human Rights Council has said, reparations should not only be equated with financial compensation, it should include restitution, rehabilitation, acknowledges of uh, acknowledgement of injustices, apologies, memorializations, educational reform, and guarantees that such injustices won't happen again. The legislation itself is a non-threatening and serious legislation. It is a reflection 
of what General Sherman tried to do. He tried to remedy the back that we see here today. He tried to give 40 acres and a mule. Can you imagine the conglomerate that would have occurred if five, six, 10, 20 slaves had come together with that? And believe me, slaves did not ask in anger. In fact, as they did not get it, they made their way. But as they made their way, we can cite 19 sites almost in America where what slaves built was destroyed. Greenwood, 100 years, is an example. Greenwood is an example of a cry for reparations. Mother Fletcher uh, and Mother Randall uh, and our sergeant, her brother, articulate that they never got anything and all that they had in Greenwood was taken from them. What an unbelievable scenario that we're facing. And so my plea today is that as you've listened to me, I leave here to go fight for voting rights. But I also leave here with a challenge and an encouragement for the understanding of all that I've said, Mr. Speaker, but more importantly, as I close, H.R. 40, the Commission to Study and Develop Reparation Proposals. I look forward to working with our leadership and all others to ensure uh, that we do make this an important step forward. I yield back. Uh, the gentlelady has yielded.